you for tuning into this video on fiscal federalism. Now, fiscal federalism is often seen as the kind of the most confusing part of federalism. And oftentimes, students find it to be a, a pretty boring topic, too. But really, it's all about money. Fiscal's all about money and finances here. And it's all about how the federal government gets involved with the states by using money. So they tend to get involved with the states by using grants. And there's two types of grants. Grants are just a big chunk of money they give to uh, a state or a state organization or a local government. They're the first type of grant. These grants are for a very specific purpose. So you may have a grant that focuses on highway construction, or you may have a grant that focuses on snow removal, or you may have a grant that focuses on uh, preparedness for a natural disaster, or you may have a grant that's focused on like homeland security, so trying to uh, protect your uh, airports or uh, protecting kind of traffic or uh, surveillance. So they have a very specific purpose, and they allow the federal government to get involved with that specific purpose by basically giving money towards it. So if the federal government is concerned about infrastructure, maybe they create a bunch of grants that have to do with bridges. Now, oftentimes these grants come with requirements. For example, sometimes they come with what are called crossover sanctions, which are essentially penalties if a state doesn't meet a requirement. So for example, uh, states are requested to change their drinking age to 21. Uh, if it's not at 21, then they may not get as much highway funding from the categorical grants that are created for highway funds. There are also conditions of aid or requirements that uh, basically the state has to meet to get any grant received through categorical means. So for example, state organizations and the state itself must follow discrimination laws. So for example, the school district focuses on not discriminating in their hiring practices, so when they're hiring teachers and hiring staff members, and this allows for them to keep getting uh, the categorical grant that focuses on education. So we do get funds from the federal government based on education and we have to meet this requirement otherwise we're not going to be able to get any funding from the federal government uh, and that funding is certainly very important. These grants are applied for so they're specifically applied for by a specific program so for example I have a friend that works in a, a county just out of the Chicago area uh, and he spends a lot of his time uh, pushing forward grants. Grants for construction needs, grants for infrastructure, grants to help basically make his county uh, and his area better. Uh, that's what he does as a job, working for the, the county. He applies for grants. Uh, and even I could apply for a grant to like go on a trip that's history related or to go study something. Uh, I could get some sort of grant for that, or even get a grant for some sort of tool for my classroom. And also, some of the categorical grants are just given by a formula. So they put in a bunch of data about the state and about local governments, and it determines whether or not you get to this categorical grant. Some examples might be if your state has a low literacy rate, maybe they'll get more funding having to do with education. If your state has a low poverty rate, Maybe they'll get some more funding, some more grants uh, for trying to help those people get jobs or higher wages. The second type of grant is a block grant. Now, when I think of block grant, I think of like a block, a giant chunk. It's basically a big grant that is just given to states automatically. It's given to states, it's given to local communities, and it's basically allowed to be used for almost anything. So states get a lot of say in what it's used for. So the state of Wisconsin gets block grants, and they can determine how they want to use those to benefit the entire state. This gives a lot more power to the states to kind of make decisions here. They often tend to favor smaller states if you're looking at by population. For example, uh, Wyoming may be a gigantic state, but there's not many people there. 
So with not many people there, it does end up getting a large chunk of block grant if we look at it based on population. Uh, whereas California has a huge population and a pretty big state. But when you base it off per population, it ends up not being a whole lot per person. Now here's a nice chart showing how grants have increased over time. Uh, really in the 50s, the federal government tried to get more involved in what the states were doing, uh, more involved with trying to set requirements for the states. And we've seen an increase in grants since then as the federal government gets more and more involved with states. So more of that marble cake that we keep seeing here. But really in the last maybe 20 years, we've seen an increase in block grants. So more block grants getting set aside. So states have more say in what they spend that money on. Now the last real thing about fiscal federalism that's important is what we call an unfunded mandate is basically an order. So it's an unfunded order. Unfunded meaning the federal government doesn't give any money for it. So it's something that you would think costs a bunch of money, but the federal government doesn't pay for it. So maybe the states have to use block grants to pay for it. Maybe they got to use tax dollars to pay for it. But the states are in charge of trying to make sure that this is taken care of. So it's an order that the states have to follow or local governments have to follow or businesses have to follow, but they're not providing any money for it. There are a bunch of great examples for it. For example, the ADA, which is the Americans with Disabilities Act, is a law that basically says you cannot discriminate uh, based on disability and you must have uh, basically fair treatment of people with disabilities. So this impacts education because schools had to have elevators for students to get to uh, different levels of the building. So they had to have fair access to the building. Another example would be Title IX. Title IX is a portion of an education bill that basically uh, promotes equality of genders in schools. So, for example, uh, back then there wasn't a lot of opportunities for girls to, to be in sports. And since Title IX, schools have had to offer both girl and boy sports um, basically based on the percentage of their population. So if you have 50% girls in your school and 50% boys, you have to have an equal number of sports uh, for each gender. Uh, also, we've seen laws having to do with environment that didn't have a lot of funding, uh, basically trying to uh, get businesses to pollute less. Uh, and also, the states didn't get necessarily funding for um, helping out those businesses or for monitoring those businesses either. Now, that's really all about fiscal federalism, uh, but there is one more key thing to mention. We have seen a big change in the past a uh, couple years, uh, basically since the 70s, since Nixon and Rhodes, trying to give more power to the states. So trying to have more block grants, trying to give more laws, uh, an opportunity to happen in the states. And we could kind of look at it like a cupcake. We got 50 cupcakes, and they can all be different styles, different types, kind of based on the personality, the culture of that state. So we've seen a kind of a movement towards having states have a little bit more power. Uh, when a government, a federal government, gives more power to their, their states or inner workings, we tend to call this uh, devolution. Uh, so a great example of this is the Welfare Reform Act of 1996. Up to 1996, welfare uh, for like food stamps and, and helping out those that are below the poverty line uh, was something that was handled by the federal government. So they organized that program. In 1996, they transitioned from, from that being a federal government program to that being a state program. The federal government still gives grants to help out states' welfare programs, but states are in charge of deciding who qualifies for the welfare program, uh, what type of uh, assistance they'll get, uh, what type of food stamp programs they offer, uh, what kind of things they can buy with those programs, and what requirements need to be met. So the states have been given a lot more uh, autonomy and power over welfare, as an example. Well, that's all I'm going to cover in this little video. Uh, I hope it helps you with preparing for the upcoming